This lesson is going to focus on taking information and representing it in a ratio table and then finding ordered pairs and graphing that information to get a visual representation of what's happening in the problem. This is very similar to when we graphed out um, the information from cars uh, tracking the distance that the car traveled in certain time intervals. Let's start with reading this problem and then setting up a ratio table. Dominic works on the weekends and on vacations from school mowing lawns in his neighborhood. For every lawn he mows, he charges $12. Complete the table, then determine ordered pairs and create a labeled graph. So let's first represent this information in a ratio table. For every lawn he mows, he charges $12. So we could choose to start out with one lawn and $12.00 or we could have started with two lawns and $24 if we wanted to. I, I'm going to start with, I'm just going to go up by ones, but two would be 24, three lawns would be $36, four lawns would be $48, five lawns would be $60. Once again, there's a lot of different possibilities uh, for setting up your ratio tables. You could have chose to count by intervals of two, you could have chose to count uh, by intervals of three if you wanted to. Uh, just however you want to organize the information. To create an ordered pair, um, and you often will hear that referred to as x comma y, it's just a relationship between your two pieces of information. In our case, we're looking at a relationship between lawns and charge. And this is the information that we're going to be graphing. So our ordered pair, let's organize it by lawns comma charge or dollars, one lawn, twelve dollars. We would call that point one comma twelve. This is how points on a graph are represented. They're represented by ordered pairs. Um, and the first digit in the ordered pair would it will always respond uh, or reflect the information along this axis. This is the x-axis uh, is what it's referred to. And the second piece of information that 12 will reflect the information along what's called the y-axis. The next ordered pair is going to be 2 comma 24, 3 comma 36, 4 comma 48, and 5 comma 60. This is the information we're going to be using to create um, our graph. As I mentioned before, uh, this is the x-axis along the horizontal. This is the y-axis. We usually talk about, in science, we talk about what information are we controlling ahead of time. Um, and we put this uh, along our x-axis, and the information that's responding goes along the y. You'll often see time along the x-axis. In this case, We're going to put lawns, the number of lawns along the x-axis, and the responding is going to be the charge or the amount of money he gets um, in dollars. So I'm just going to call that money. could also call it charge. Now we want to reflect the information in our ratio table um, into the graph. So if we look at um, kind of ranges, the range of our information when we look at lawns ranges from one to five lawns. So you might think, okay, I, I can count by, I can make this zero. It's always important in a ratio graph to start at zero, zero. And we could call this kind of one lawn, two lawns, three lawns, four lawns, five lawns. But and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we also know that a graph can be used to see numerous information because it continues in this ratio. So we're going to have a visual of every single ratio beyond just the information that's represented in our ratio table. And if we look at the questions, we can see down here, question one says, how many lawns will Dominic need in, to, to mow in order to make $240. Well, our information doesn't extend to $240.
And question two says, how much money will Dominic need to make if he mows nine lawns? Our information doesn't extend that far. So instead of going back and solving it mathematically with a table, we want to use our graph to answer those questions. So I'm going to change the interval here. And let's call, we still want to start at zero. And let's say that each point now represents two lawns. So this would be like two, four, six. And this is where it starts getting a little crowded. So you often see graphs kind of skip the in-between numbers and call this 4, 8, we could have counted by 4s and not written uh, multiples of 2. And for money, let's go by um, 24s. Let's count by 24s. So we can really extend the information that we're getting. 24, 48, 72, 96, 120, Sixty-four, and we could keep going by twenty-fours. Um, eight. All right. Now we can get information ranging from zero lawns all the way to twenty-eight lawns, and information ranging from zero dollars all the way to three hundred and twelve dollars. Even though that's not in our ratio table. Let's start now plotting our points. Each one of these ordered pairs will be a point. So we would have a point at 1, 12. Well, that's kind of in this free space over here, and that's hard to predict. So I'm going to kind of skip those ones because they're not as precise. But I know we have 2, 24. And we have 4, 48. And I didn't extend my graph out to six, but two points is really going to also be enough. But if I extended my table off to six, I would have gotten uh, 72. And so now we can get the idea of a graph. In a ratio graph, it should always form a straight line. If you're getting something that looks um, like it's starting to curve a little bit, then your information isn't working in ratio. And if you know it's supposed to be a ratio, then you probably did something wrong. Um, I'm going to extend this information out. Let's see if this will do it. And if you make a line, and this is something you'd want to use a ruler for, that's passing through your three points precisely, it should form a straight line. And this information continues on really forever in this ratio. Without doing any mathematical cal calculations, this graph has so much valuable information. We not only know these three points that are plotted, but now if you also look, we know for eight lawns, $96. 12 lawns, $144. 14 lawns, $168. And we also know everything in between would be halfway points. So to answer these questions, without doing any math now, our graph has all the math we need, how many lawns will Dominic need to mow in order to get $240? Well, I can look at my graph and see here's $240. That's lined up with 20 lawns. So the answer would be 20. How much money will Dominic earn if he mows nine lawns? Well, this information, eight and nine is going to be right between eight and ten. And this information, if we think about it kind of like a double number line, kind of making a tape diagram, 
is going to be halfway between 96 and 120. So the distance is 24, so that's going to be 12. So 96 plus 12 more is 100 and eight dollars. And that goes back to our one to 12 ratio. So we can answer numerous math questions just based on creating a graph. And one last thing, the slope of this graph, we would say is, and if we put this, this is where the equation piece comes in. The equation of this graph is money, and this is an important piece of information, money equals 12 times lawns. So whatever the lawns is, the money is going to be 12 greater than that. And that's the information that's represented in this graph. And that would be called um, the slope of the graph as well.